Hey guys, I've been uh, kind of, I've been wondering whether I should do this or not, but I decided why not, why not do it now. Uh, I'm going to be doing an impressions video, a very late impressions video on Sonic Lost World. And I know it's been like two months and that probably everyone's done this at this point, but I figured my thoughts on Sonic Lost World was just kind of meh. So uh, I'm probably going to delete that video since this will pretty much explain everything. Uh, now, if you actually saw my video games collection vid, you know, all, maybe two of you, maybe three of you if I'm lucky enough, uh, to the two people that have seen my video games collection vids, uh, you actually would know that I hated Sonic Lost World at first. However, after seeing many reviews of it, particularly two, uh, Nick and Aqua Magna 2's, and Clement's video, uh, video for Sonic Lost World. If you're wondering who Clement is, he is a channel on YouTube, so, you know, to the two people who don't know what Clement is, uh, who Clement is, um, uh, Clement J4, uh, J642, that is his channel, uh, uh, he is, um, he, he's a video game Let's Player. He does mostly Mega Man and Sonic games, uh, cause he's doing those chronologically as series. Well, he already did Mega Man for the most part. Uh, he's also doing Sonic right now, and um, he he did a vlog review or a vlog review, and this is pretty much what I'm doing as well. <laughs> I, in fact, these videos might as well be inspired by him because uh, they're pretty much vlog reviews. Um, he does his vlog reviews of Sonic games and. Um, any, well, actually, not even just Sonic games, any games in general, uh, what am I thinking? Uh, he does, he does vlog reviews on tons of games, tons of games, Batman games, uh, mainly the Arkham series, Sonic games, uh, new, uh, uh Soul Calibur 5 he did, he does, he did the, he did the Assassin's Creed games, I don't, he said he's not doing 4, so... <laughs> Uh, whatever. I'm not an Assassin's Creed guy, so... And I can kind of understand where he's coming from, considering Assassin's Creed pops a game out every fucking year. Anyway. Uh, anyway. Um, pretty much I decided to give the game another chance, and I really started to like it. You know, after I decided to play the way that Sega wanted us to play the game, and... Forget that, you know, this isn't, this is a very, this is very different from a, a, any other Sonic game. It's still a Sonic game, it's just a very different kind of Sonic game. You know, it's still a platformer, it's still a puzzle, and you know, it has Sonic elements, it's still a Sonic game, it's just a very different kind of Sonic game. It's a very particular kind of Sonic game. In fact, Nick on Aqua Magnet 2 probably wouldn't have, could have, couldn't have said it better. It's one of those special games, like Sunshine. If you remember, Super Mario Sunshine was very different. It was a different kind of Mario game, you could say. Um, this is kind of like Sunshine in a way. I know it's kind of more reminiscent of the Galaxy games, if anything, because the whole... Um, everything. Uh, but... Uh, you know, Nick and Aqua Magnet 2 compared it more to Sunshine because it Sunshine was very different from other ser from the uh, the rest of the series, and um, so yeah. In fact, I recommend you watch Nick's review because Nick and Aqua Magna 2 I think has the best review of Sonic Lost World because he just did a fantastic job on everything. He covered every little thing, so and, you know, so definitely watch his review. Anyway, Sonic Lost World. This is a uh, very different from how Sonic's controlled in recent games. It's no longer boost to win. It's no longer, you know, just boosting in general. Uh, all, you know, boosting, quick stepping, drifting, all that's gone. So, uh, now we're at somewhat back to the adventure formulas with this game. And, uh, Sonic has tons of new moves at his disposal. Uh, he has the he has the kick attack and he has the new parkour system. There is also some new other new elements in this game, um, and uh, I guess I should talk about the way Sonic controls. Uh, in terms of stuff, Sonic controls similar to how he did in the adventure games, somewhat, somewhat similar, uh, but there is some differences. For one thing, Sonic has a run button now. Uh, he has, if you hold the, one of the trigger buttons on the Wii U gamepad, uh, Sonic will run. 
instead of just walk. When he's just walking normally, he just does like a leisurely jog. Uh, and it is useful. It does work very well. Even when I hated the game, I thought the weight game controlled all right. My problem, though, was the jumping controls. Because you can still you lose yourself easily. And you can. Uh, the controls aren't perfect. They're a bit awkward. But you get used to them, and they do work well enough. Um, at the same time, again, you can lose yourself. But if, if you... If you get used to the controls, that's pretty much the main thing that can kill this game. You need to get used to the controls. And I'm not saying they're bad, they're awkward, but they do work. They, they work well, and once you get a feel for them, you will... You'll, you'll be playing this game in no time. The problem with this game is that the game doesn't really tell you the controls. Like, it, the hint system has been a bit nerfed in the other games. You ha instead of actually running into one of those question mark things uh, that you find in Sonic Colors, uh, that you know that tells you what to do, uh, this game doesn't really do that. Uh, this game actually has the question mark things on the gamepad, so you have to pause the game and look on the gamepad, which is just stupid. I hate that. In fact, I will say the gamepad is not utilized well in this game, but I'll get to that later on. Um, <clears throat> one thing that this game does. Uh, uh, is, um, the parkour system. Whenever you're holding, uh, whenever you have uh, any amount of momentum, so even, like, let's say a, a speed booster sends you skyrocketing and you hit a wall, Sonic will automatically start climbing up it, kind of like Prince of Persia, to be a, a, a bit, uh, only, uh, it's, uh, it's Sonic. <laughs> um, Sonic has this new parkour system where you can run up walls and jump from wall to wall, kind of like the triangle jump in Sonic and Shadow. Uh, it's more reminiscent of Shadow, because I think Sonic, you couldn't really run up the wall. Shadow, you could sort of run on the wall, so it's kind of similar to that. And I know you couldn't Shadow the Hedgehog, I know that for sure. Um, though it's a bit more complicated this time around, because... Um, the parkour is not very precise, and that can really kill it. I mean, once you get used to it, the parkour is very fun to use, and it is very satisfying to use. Um, another thing is you can also climb up walls, so you can get to other areas easier, and it really makes the level, it, it makes exploring the levels a lot more fun, I find. You, it, you, you have a lot of room to explore, and that's really, really neat. Um... However, you don't have to explore, you can just ignore it if you want to with the spin dash, and, you know, the, the parkour, uh, is very fun to use, um, the spin dash is back as well, uh, the spin dash works a bit differently from other games, uh, you can still spin dash jump and everything, so that's always, you know, that's fun, but, uh, it is very different from how it's controlled in the past, for one thing, the spin dash, um, uh, the spin dash is actually somewhat like the boost, only it's a bit more tricky to pull off. What I'm trying to say is that once you, if you hold down the button and then let go, the spin dash you, is it, it pretty much, uh, it's pretty much a normal spin dash. You know, you're, you're accustomed to it at this point. However, if you, rep if you, uh, after you charge it up, let go, hold it again, and Sonic will keep spin dashing. And I actually really like this, because it controls a lot better than the boost. It actually controls really fluidly, like, you can go all sorts of places with it, and it, it's really, really fast. So it's pretty much like an infinite boost, only it's uh, a bit more tricky to pull off, because you can't pull it off everywhere. And if you can pull it off, uh, you need to know where you can pull it off. And if you jump, uh, if, you still, if you're still holding the spin dash button and you don't land on something like, uh, like, uh, sand, uh, or, um, what's another thing? Goop, because uh, Goop is in the caves for some reason. <laughs> uh, you can continue spin dashing. So you can, like, spin dash, jump, spin that, continue spin dashing, jump, continue spin dashing, jump, continue spin dashing. And that's a lot of fun. It's very satisfying to pull off. You won't be able to do it if you double jump. It's only for single jumps, but it's still, you know, it's still an option. Um, Sonic still has his usual homing attack. However, it's been a bit... It's been played around with a bit. For one thing, uh, you actually don't lock on to just one enemy now. You lock on to multiple enemies, and you will go pretty much. You you can't uh, uh you can't um um you can't uh 
how do I word this? Uh, you, you, it's pretty much uh, a set path. So let's say uh, it locked onto one enemy, but then locked onto another one. Uh, the first enemy it locked onto, it's gonna attack him. Uh, it's gonna, uh, it's a chain homing attack. Pretty much, it's going to homing attack on the first enemy, then automatically go to the next enemy that it locked onto. So it's like one, two, and you can't really decide which enemy you want to hit first. Uh, at least, not what I find. Um, it hasn't gotten me killed. I wouldn't really like it to return, but it's it works so well enough in this game. Uh, it does make fighting enemies a bit easier since there's a lot more enemies in this game, though it doesn't really slow the game down. So, don't worry about that. It's nothing like Sonic 06. It's never going to be like Sonic 06, trust me. Um, at the same time, you can also charge up the homing attack. Pretty much, if you have more than one red ghoul on the enemy, Sonic will do a fully charged homing attack. So, let's say I'm at a boss fight. It takes three hits to kill. I hit him with the homing attack normally, it only does one hit. However, if I stand there for a bit and let the red the reticules uh, keep overlapping each other so it gets to like three reticules, hit him once, he's dead. The bosses, because of that, can take like two hits. So it, it's actually, I really liked that addition. I think it should come back in future games. I mean, how handy would that be in Sonic Heroes 06, Shadow the Hedgehog, how handy would that be with any game that has health bar enemies? I, I mean, I can kind of forgive it with Heroes or Shadow, but 06, no. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the fully charged homing attack, I like that addition. I think they should keep it. Yeah. Um, uh, then there's also a kick. Uh, there's a new, it's pretty much a second homing attack, only it's a bit stronger. And if you actually uh, hit, hit an enemy from a certain angle, he'll actually fly off, and he can hit other enemies as well, which, so it's a little more, so you gotta be strategic, strategic about it, about it, if you want to hit multiple enemies with it, um, it is a, I do like the kick, I think it's a really nice addition, it did trip me up at first, at first, because, first, yeah, uh, it did trip me up at first, because, um, pretty much, uh, it, they does, the game doesn't really tell you which enemies need to be kicked or not. Like, there's the crab enemy, the crab badnik, and if you home and attack him, you you lose your rings. You can't kill him. So you have to use the kick on him. You kick him, and then you home and attack him. Though I find it easier, just kick him twice. It's just faster. Um, so, uh, uh, that might annoy some people. They don't really tell you what enemies need to be kicked or not to be killed in one hit, and that can be a bit annoying, but once you know what enemies need to be kicked, it's not that bad, and it's only maybe like two or three enemies, I, I think Slicers, and yes, Slicers are back, the damn monsters from Me Metropolis Zone, um, Egg Pawns, and, um, what was that other enemy, those crab enemies I just mentioned, I think that's it, I could be wrong, oh no, Caterkillers also can be kicked as well. And those humongous versions of Caterkillers as well. The levels are pretty fun to go through. Um, though the themes themselves... I think the levels kind of played it a little safe. Because the level themes are... Say, a little more Mario. There's a green grass level. There's, um, there's a desert level. There's a beach level. There's a... Uh, uh, there's an ice level. There's a sky level. And, oh wait, no, there's a jungle level, then there's a sky level, then there's a lava level at the very end. And, uh, it's a very Mario type of level themes there. Though they do sometimes interrupt. One thing that is kind of cool, it doesn't really have anything to do with, you know, because they sometimes mix and match different level themes. Like in Windy Hill, there's a cave area where you're inside the tube, uh, instead of outside the tube. Uh, uh you're inside the tube. And it's different from Windy Hill Act uh, 1 and 2 and 3. Um, so that's really neat. Um, uh, so the, it kind of switches up the theme a bit. Uh, another thing uh, is that... Um, uh, what else is there? In the, desert, in, in the desert level, the desert world, there's actually three themes. There's a honeycomb theme, a two desert themes, and there is uh, the... Uh, dessert theme, you know, the one we saw at the trailers where it was like, 
Uh, should that be dessert? What does that have to do with the desert? And they actually added an S there as well. Uh, I think that was added after E3. I thought that was pretty funny, actually. It's like, dessert, you happy now? We added an S. There you go. Yeah, you happy? You just had to ruin the pun. <laughs> it's just kind of... I thought that was kind of funny. They're like, oh, those clever little bastards. Um, another thing, uh, is that, um... Uh, these level themes don't really have anything to do with each other. Like, I don't really know how the honey, uh, uh, the honeycomb has the honey comb has anything to do with the chocolate donut Twizzler candy zone, or, or I, I don't know what those themes have to do with the desert. But hey, whatever. They're they, they're fun levels. I don't question it because it's Sonic. <laughs> you you, you, you know, it is nice that they kind of switch up the themes here. Because, uh, if the themes are going to be very Mario, at least they switch up the theme every once in a while. Which I think makes every level somewhat different from the last. So I think that's really good. Um, uh, I, I think that's uh, pretty much it for, you know, in terms of level themes. Levels themselves, though, uh, there are different kinds. There are ones where you're outside the tubes. There are ones where you're inside the tubes. There are 2D-centric stages. And they're pretty fun. Uh, the 2D sections are a little meh, though. I personally don't mind them. I know tons of people that don't like them at all. And I will admit, Sonic's a bit slow on, uh, in those. Sonic's not the fastest thing in this game. Uh, now, personally, for me, I think he's fast enough in the 3D sections. I think he's very fast in the 3D sections. So I don't know what the hell people are talking about when they say Sonic is slow in this. First off, this game wasn't trying to be the fastest Sonic game ever. Second off, it is still a fast-paced platformer, like Sonic should be. And it's much more heavily focused on platformer due to these controls. I do think Sonic's a little too slow in the 2D sections, though. I just feel his controls aren't really the greatest in the 2D sections. Because the 2D sections, there were many times where I tried to do a jump. And Sonic just... his jump just... The momentum just died. I don't know what happened. You need to have a certain momentum, but there's something that just kills the momentum sometimes. Like, I find I go back, jump, and then afterwards, it just, like, instead of doing a usual hop, I just go, huh, and then I have to use the double jump, and then I just fall to my death because it, it, it just, it doesn't, my momentum just somehow just, I don't know what happened. It's just my momentum got screwed somehow. So I find his controls in the 2D sections aren't the greatest. I feel they need to be improved a bit. Uh, the 2D sections are still fun, uh, but they definitely need to be improved. They definitely need improvements. Um, what's another thing? Uh, can't really say anything more. I'm, uh, the, the outside the tube levels control pretty well. You know, they're the 3D ones anyway. The 3D levels control pretty well. Uh, again, you can lose yourself, but it, 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 you know, if you got used to the controls, uh, this shouldn't be too much of an issue. Oh, another thing about the 2D sections, and I'm surprised I almost missed this. The parkour can be incredibly annoying. Don't hold down the run button in 2D sections. It can be incredibly annoying. Because sometimes Sonic will grab onto a wall I never had any intention of grabbing. And that can get really annoying. So, uh... Try not to hold down the run button in 2D sections unless you really want to hold it down for some reason. Let, like, let's say it's something like Skyroad Act 2, where you're constantly running uh, on top of platforms, running and jumping. You can hold it down there, and it's fine. And if you want to gain momentum, that's another way you run. But don't hold it down when you're in like two like two walls and you're platforming. It's just, it like, when you're platforming over stairs or whatever, it's just really annoying. The parkour can be really annoying in 2D. Again, the 2D sections aren't really the greatest. Um, another thing, uh, one thing that they brought back is the double jump in Sonic uh, Colors. They also brought back the bounce bracelet in Sonic Adventure 2 in 06. And uh, they work well enough for what they're supposed to do. Uh, the double jump does help in 2D sections a bit, due to the whole momentum gets screwed thing. Bounce bracelet, uh, it isn't the most useful thing ever. It is fun. Uh, it is fun to use, though it is weird that you can only use it three times. I, I, I don't, I don't get that. Um, you only, eh, eh, whatever. 
Um, that's pretty much it for Sonic's overall control and the levels. Um, there is a lot of extra stuff in this. For one thing, there's a hidden world. After you beat the game, spoilers, there's a hidden world with a couple extra stages that you can play. One of them's really fun where you naturally uh, play with uh, Tails in his plane. So that's a lot of fun. And there's even a remix of Believe in Myself for Sonic Adventure 2. Uh, that's cool. Uh, there are tons of different kinds of levels. I won't spoil what all them, uh, what all the uh, types of levels are. But... Um, there, there are tons of levels. Uh, some of them are really gimmicky. This game can be pretty gimmicky at times, I will admit. Uh, like, some levels just don't need to be in it at all, and there are two levels in particular where Sonic just defies gravity altogether somehow, uh, and they're just atrocious. One's not mandatory, one's completely optional, uh, but the mandatory one, oh, it controls, like, ass. This is one of the worst, that, that's some of the worst control in the Sonic game right there, dare I say it right now, uh... There's also other extra stuff. There's the RC vehicles, which now, after playing them with my friend Zach, are completely useless. Uh, they're pretty much the co-star mode in Sonic... Uh, Super Mario Galaxy, sorry. I, I keep getting too confused. In Super Mario Galaxy, there was a co-star mode. Co-star mode is even more useless in Sonic Lost World than it is in Galaxy. Um, and Galaxy was at least had some uses. Like, you'd star bits easier. Other than that, I don't really think it did much, well, it was kind of game-breaking. Eh. Whatever. The co-star mode in Sonic Lost World is pretty much useless. Don't use it. Uh, anyway, uh, there's a time attack mode where you can get ranked like the previous levels, uh, and S rank, of course, is the highest, and, um, what else? Um, one thing that kind of annoyed me when the game first came out is that you didn't gain an extra life when you got 100 rings. Thank God they put a patch in that. They, they, they put a patch in the game where you can now get 100 rings to get you one extra life. Thank you for putting that in the game. Uh, one strategy you can use to get a lot of lives is if you go to uh, one of the levels, the cave levels, where there's a bunch of little crystals that give you a ring every time you step on one, use Supersonic. Wait till his rings go down uh, like, let's say you you have 101 range. Wait till his range go back down to 99. You can actually transform out of Supersonic, get a ring, you'll get an extra life that way. And Supersonic is in the game, and I'll talk about him in a moment. Anyway. Anyway, um, uh, so you can get extra lives pretty easily now. Thank you, Sega, for patching the game up. Uh, another thing is there is this Miiverse thing where you can get items and... For the love of God, turn it off, because while it is nice that you can get items from the community, oh God, it is so annoying, because, um, let's say, hey, let's say you only can carry five items, and in your inventory, let's say you have all five filled, hey, you don't have enough to actually put this item in your inventory, would you like to whisper it away, or would you like to take ten seconds out of your time to either discard it, or... Replace it with another item, and I'm like, no, I just want to move on to the next stage, damn it. It is so, it's such a pace breaker. Turn it off, for the love of God, turn it off. Uh, anyway. I mean, the items you can get are kind of, are pretty sweet. There's rings, speed shoes, um, there's, um, invincibility, there's, um, there's the electric shields are in the game, and there's normal shields. I don't think there's any fire shield or... A water shield. I know there's one in Sonic uh, Lost World for the 3DS, um, and I'm not looking forward to that version. <laughs> um, uh, I, I, I'll do an impressions vid on it, but only when I get the game, and I do not want to get the game at all. But yeah, um, you can get items from the Miiverse, and it's just, turn it off. For the love of God, turn it off. It's just so much of a pace breaker. Uh, anyway, uh, there is one more, uh, one more thing, and this is probably going to be the, the biggest thing that people have been talking about is, well, one of the biggest things, anyway, besides the new control scheme, uh, uh more the red rings, the red ring collecting. I know that a lot of people have had a hard time with the red ring collecting. Here's what I'm saying. The red ring collecting is not that bad in the first four worlds. 
Tro uh, from Windy Hill to Tropical Coast, it's not that bad. Frozen Factory, there's only one red ring that's really, really hard in Frozen Factory, and that is the pinball one. Fuck that red ring. I never want to see it again. It is so... Pinball's already luck-based as it is, and they made you get a... Like, like, there's this... this, this there's four t pinball tables combined into one, and they all stack up. It's like a pinball tower. You have to get to the very top to get the red ring. That took forever. That took for fucking ever, and I never want to get that red ring again. Oh. Another red... Uh, 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 red rings in the last three worlds, though, are a bitch to get. Like, some of them aren't that bad. Like, Sky Road Zone 2, it's not that bad, because the red rings in that one, you just gotta be quick on your feet. Uh, they're all in the way. You just gotta be quick on your feet about it, and know how to get to them. Uh, it, they're, they're pretty in the way, though. Though, for something like, um, Silent Forest, uh, Zone 3, or Lava Mountain Act 3 has two of these, two of these, and there are red rings on the wall where you need to parkour. In the 3DS version from the footage I've seen, you actually continue going straight forward when you're parkouring on a wall. With the Wii U version, he kind of falls down a little bit as he's parkouring. So you can't really keep yourself perfectly straight, and these red rings want you to do that so you can actually collect them. And it is the most frustrating thing. I hate those red rings. Hate them. Fuck those red rings. Some of them are just dickishly placed in general. Some have, want you to use parkour over bottomless pits, and it, it's just frustrating. During your first playthrough, don't go after the red rings. Wait until you get beat the game, get 99 lives, get used to the controls, then go after the red rings. That is what I would recommend. That's what I did, because of the stuff I've heard about them. That's what I did. That's what you should do. That's how I did it. It wasn't as frustrating as most other people have uh, you know, have had with an experience, you know, it's not as frustrating of an experience. As, you know, because I know some call me Johnny hated the red ring collecting in Sonic Lost World. And he says the game has two, two, two mindsets, which, yeah, it, it, he is right about that to an extent. Uh, I don't think the red ring collecting is as bad if you follow the steps that I'm giving you. Just get 99 lives, get used to the control, beat the game, and then go after the red rings. You can collect any red, but however, here is one thing. Collect at, at any red rings that are in the way, get them. Because there are flickies. Uh, there are these uh, circus tents that you can unlock along with the red rings. And they're pretty. it's pretty much like a bad breakout kind of thing. Where uh, you're pretty much shooting yourself in like a cannon or a trampoline. Or you're, you're using a, 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 you know, a, a seas and so just to... Jump, you see using a bunch of things. There are a bunch of contraptions. You control these with the gamepad, and you can get flickies by popping balloons. Whenever you launch Sonic or Tails or Orbot and Cubot, <laughs> um, it really just depends on the uh, the, the circus tent. And you launch them up, them up, and they hit balloons. And those balloons can uh, get flickies for you. You can get flickies in the levels by finding animal capsules. But it t it's time consuming. I recommend you use the uh, the circuses. They're pretty fun. They're okay, though you won't be replaying Sonic Lost World for those. So the Flicky Collection is kind of unnecessary to me, but at least it's done this way. The Flicky Collection, by the end of it, you should already have. Like when I played the game, I it took me uh, it, it didn't take me that long to get to like I have like. 20,000 flickies up until now because I got every flick, flicky capsule in the levels that I could and I played the circus tents whenever I needed to grind for flickies. So it's really not that bad. It's nowhere near sun and moon metal collecting from Sonic Unleashed. From what I heard, that was bad. I've never done it myself because I have I have the Wii version, but I heard it was pretty bad. So I, I, you know, so I heard it wasn't, it wasn't, it's, it isn't as time consuming as I've seen Let's Plays in Sonic Unleashed HD. And, um, so yeah, it, it, it's, um, it, it's handled well, but it shouldn't really be there in the first place. There is also, uh, the, you know, the red rings, what the red rings do, I guess I'm gonna spoil this as well. The red rings 
unlock supersonic and that's it they you don't get anything else for them besides there is the circus tents but honestly those are just things those are just ways to get flickies faster that's really all it is in terms of actual rewards it's just supersonic and my problem with another problem i have one problem that i have with this is game is that you can't rewatch cutscenes that's stupid you can't there's no sound test that's stupid colors even did that and i didn't like that same with generations I mean, they had unlockable songs in Generations, which I loved. It's just that they didn't have a sound test for the main soundtrack. You know, you didn't have classic City Escape or modern City Escape in the soundtrack. So, I think Red Rains could have been used for that stuff instead of just uh, used, in, instead of just Supersonic. It would have been nice if they had more rewards. And it, the fact that they don't is kind of disappointing. Supersonic really isn't worth the 180 red rings unless Supersonic's really important to you. I got him because I wanted to get Supersonic, but I will say, you know, get the red rings if you want Supersonic, but other than that, you know, it's, that's all you're getting. You're not getting anything else. I mean, Supersonic's fun and all. He's not nerfed like he is in Generations. Uh, pretty much how Supersonic controls in this game He's pretty much controls like Sonic. Uh, in fact, he doesn't really have any added speed or jump height. Uh, be, and personally, with the level design this way, I think that's actually a good thing. Because then Super Sonic would control like ass. His movement is a little slippery and erratic. Because it, it, when he starts running, he just zoom, start running, starts running. And his movement can be really erratic. So you gotta make sure you... Because, uh... Uh, it's really, it's weird. It's very weird. So you gotta get used to that. Another thing that there is, is uh, he's invincible, obviously. Uh, he, you know, he's invincible from most things. His parkour ability doesn't really, uh, he doesn't really have an added parkour ability, which is kind of disappointing. I wish he did. But he does have the boost. So yeah, Sonic Unleash is in this game, folks. You just gotta go really out of your way to get it. Um... And that's pretty much how Supersonic plays. Uh, he can ignore Ice Physics as well. That's only for certain levels, though. Supersonic's not... Uh, and But sadly, he does get turned off when you use a Wisp. And when you go on the Mach Speed sections. And you know what? I should talk about how those control, too. One thing... Uh, th there's Mach Speed sections uh, where Sonic is constantly running and can't stop. It's That's pretty much what they are. They control miles better than Sonic 06. And... Um, they control very well. Uh, I do like uh, one thing. They have this line of badniks that you can homing attack as well, and that's kind of cool. But uh, you know, it is a bit automated. But then again, this is the mock speed sections. They are really fun, and they're mostly optional. They're they're really just a little time wasters. It's kind of like um, if you find a golden cannon in the levels, it'll take you to a very brief mock speed sections. There are levels that do have forced mock speed sections on you, but even they're not that bad, and they're fun. They're really fun. I love Desert Ruin that too. That's the best mock speed section in this game, because it's a whole level dedicated to it, and it is fun. It's so much fun, and the music is great in in that level as well. So, uh, they, they pretty much control similar to 06. You can jump, you can homing attack this time around. Yes, you can homing attack this time around. Uh, you can, you run fast, yeah, it's a mock speed section. And then there, there are the Wisps, and the Wisps have no reason to be here at all. The Wisps are just, they're pointless. They really are pointless. They're just, they're not forced on you most of the time, though there are a few exceptions. They're, they're just not as fun to use, because they control the gyroscope, with the gyroscope. You have to use the gyroscope or the gamepad's touchscreen to control them, uh, there are some new Wisps. Laser and Drill pretty much work similar to how they did in Sonic Colors, though Drill controls like ass for some reason. And he controls even more like ass when he's in underwater in 3D. Oh, God, that is the worst control ever, besides the flying sections in the game. Uh, another thing, uh, there's the Eagle Wisp that controls with a gyro gyroscope. That controls all right. The Indigo Asteroid, that controls all right. The gyroscope is just doesn't really make them fun to use. They don't even take you anywhere special, either. I've never used a Wisp to get a red ring besides the Asteroid Wisp in two two occasions. That's it. At the same time, uh, the, the touchscreen controls for the Pink Wisp, 
pretty much you use you touch the places you want to go to and it's pointless and it doesn't work i find that the touchpad is very unresponsive like i touch something and the the peak was just goes backwards for some reason and then i fall to my death and it's so annoying the lists aren't that fun to use don't use them i i avoid them whenever i have i avoid them there are certain sections where you have to use them but I, I would just avoid them at all costs. The parkour is tons more fun. <laughs> so, uh, the Whisper are kind of a disappointment. Again, I don't think the gamepad was utilized very well. It's very clunky with its hints, and the Wisps aren't really fun to use. And that's pretty much the main thing. I, I do kind of like the circuses, but even then, I don't really go back to them. Uh, I guess now I should talk about the story and the music. Uh, graphics, however... I, I'm just going to talk about those first. Graphics and sound are top-notch. Sonic games usually don't have a problem with making... Sega always makes Sonic games look good. Sonic Team always makes Sonic games look really great. This one has a much more simple art style, but it's not overly simple. It, it's very it's very colorful, it's very cartoony, and I love it. It's just so pleasant. It, it just looks so beautiful. It's a gorgeous look. I think it's the best-looking game on the Wii U so far. Uh, the game's music is also great. Uh, you know, I never really have any problems with that. The story, um, you know, the story is, um, it's good, question mark. I like the story, but it's not that great, to be honest. It's very bare in many cases. They never tell us who what the Lost Hex, which is the location of uh, the area Sonic travels through, is a lo it's called the Lost Hex. We never get any explanation on it. These deadly six that we get introduced to, in fact, I probably, I forgot to talk about them throughout this entire video. Um, the deadly six aren't really, they they come out of nowhere, they're just the bosses of the game. Um, the, the, there's not much that it is really explained here. I mean, I like the dialogue, the dialogue's very good, and the voice acting's pretty good too. But the Deadly Six are very one-dimensional. They don't really come... They come out of nowhere and they just disappear by the end of the game. Uh, the story is where Sonic is chasing Eggman... Um, uh, and trying to get that capsule. Eggman drops the capsule into the Lost Hex. And Sonic and Tails eventually find it. Once they find it... Uh, they find Eggman with these new... Uh, these... Uh, uh, things, Zeddy, known as, yet yeah, Zeddy, uh, called the Deadly Six, and the Deadly Six are the, pretty much the bosses of the game, and that's pretty much all I can say for them. Again, they're very one-dimensional. I do like Zor, he is very funny, and some of them are okay, they're, they're at the very least, they're, they're okay, I like them, they have some memorable one-liners, they're, they're pretty funny. I like Zor, I like Zo uh, Zomom, I believe that's his name, um, and Zaz. Those are the three that I like. Uh, Master Zeke and, uh, uh, what is his name? Xena? Xena is their name? And then Zavik. I remember that guy. Uh, those three are kind of bland. I, I mean, I remember their names, but that took a while for me to remember their names. I don't even remember Xena. <laughs> I always forget about her, because she's so bland. Um, anyway, um, story, uh, Pretty much, uh, the Deadly Six later betray Eggman. Uh, the Deadly Six are wor were working with Eggman before, but after, uh, Sonic kicks, uh, uh, the magic conch shell that Eggman is using to control the Zeddy, the Zeddy start to rebel- the, the, the Zeddy rebel against Eggman, and now it's up to Sonic and Eggman to team up to stop them. And that's pretty much the plot. Um, I won't give any spoilers away, though the ending is very, very, very surprising. No, it's not. <laughs> it's really not surprising at all. But, yeah. Oh, um, I guess I should talk about the boss fights now. I know many people didn't like the boss fights in this game. I personally thought they were okay. They were pretty weak, but then again, they're mini-bosses. You know, they're, what would you rather have, guys? Would you rather have a two-minute boss at the end of the level, which drags the level tremendously, or would you rather have a short boss fight that ends the level pretty soon? And... I would much rather have the boss, the boss fights, the mini boss fights, 
more than actual boss fights. If they wanted to make like a two minute boss, just make a just make a boss act for that. The 3DS version does that, so if you're looking for better boss fights, go to the 3DS version. Um, anyway, um, they're pretty easy. They, they can be taken down in literally like two or three hits if you know how to use the fully charged homing attack. They're not really that hard. Not, at the very least, I like them. I like them. I still think they're fun. So yeah, the, the final boss, I won't spoil it, but it's really, really stupid and really, really... The final boss, I don't like the final boss in this game. It's not hard, it's just stupid. It, it, and it's not even time heater stupid, it's... We're gonna rehash something. Because the final boss fight is very familiar to another recent game. It's not Generations, I'll give you that much, but... It's stupid, and it's pathetic, and it's... Just because of the multi-charge homing attack, it's pathetic. Anyway, that's pretty much Sonic Lost World. I don't... I think I've covered everything. Um, is there anything more? Uh, I said the soundtrack's great. Again, the soundtrack's really great. I love Tropical Zone Act 3, and the final boss music, despite the final boss being stupid, is still very good. So that's Sonic Lost World. I hope you enjoyed this very long video. I am the Seaman235, signing out.